Hello chess fans. Today's game was played by Mikhail Tal in a simul in Germany in 1969. Playing on the white side of a Sicilian defense, he achieved one of the most spectacular and memorable finishes in his entire chess career. To be honest, ever since I saw this game for the first time, I've been trying to achieve it in my own play and I never have managed to achieve a combination like this. So, Tal opened this game up with the move e4, of course, and his opponent responded with the Sicilian defense, and we soon get into specifically a dragon variation of the Sicilian defense. The Sicilian dragon, of course, features the fianchetto of the bishop over here. It is one of the sharpest lines. It's one that I personally enjoy myself, but at the top level, it's often considered a bit risky because white's kingside attack essentially makes itself. It's very, very easy to play. In this game, as the game advances, what we see is that black chooses to get around the problems of the dragon variation by simply not castling. This, though, has its own risks. In this position, black played the move bishop to d7, which I think is already a suspicious move. As a dragon player myself, I know that when I come out with bishop d7, I can end up losing time if I'm not properly uh, properly timing this move. One problem for black is that the move d5 is a major strategic goal in the dragon variation. For example, after uh, castling here, you are immediately threatening d5, and white needs to account for that either by castling or playing bishop c4 or possibly playing the less common move g4. But all other moves don't really account for d5. They allow d5 and black gets a good position. By playing the move bishop to d7 here instead of castling, black makes d5 an impossibility, which allows white a very free hand to take on the dragon. Tal naturally continues with castles, and we get queen a5 from his opponent. I'm also not crazy about queen a5. The queen is actually not that great of an attacking piece on a5, and variations with queen a5 in the dragon have, I think, really become quite a bit less popular than they used to be, mostly because white wins many brilliant games against queen a5 variations. In any case, now Tal can sit Tal continued just a little bit conservatively with king b1, certainly not a bad move, but you didn't really need to move the king and you could already have commenced pushing your pawns on the king side. Black responds with rook c8, certainly hoping to move this knight, offer an exchange sack at some point, and win the kind of beautiful game that many players have won on the black side at some point. Tal continues with g4, advancing on the king side, and black responds with pawn h6. Now, Pawn h6 is many things. One thing that it is, is a commitment to keep the king in the middle of the board. Black in this game seems to be afraid, with good reason, of castling kingside and allowing Tal to attack the king after you castle kingside. But not castling in this position and in many dragons just isn't really a viable option. Now, why do I say that black is really committing to leaving the king here after pawn h6? The move pawn h6 places this pawn in the direct line of fire of the bishop and the queen. So this rook is now compelled to defend that pawn. If you castle, white will simply capture on h6. So you are no longer able to castle, which means the king must remain in the middle of the board, which can create issues, and it means that this rook uh, is not able to get involved. It's stuck defending this h6 pawn. The problems are continu uh, continuing to mount thanks to these inaccuracies from black. So pawn h4, Tau continues with the pawn storm. The pawn storm is still a strong idea, even though the king is committed to the center. Pawn a6 from black, trying to get the pawns rolling, but it's obvious that this is a bit slow. Now bishop e2, connecting the rooks, and knight to e5. This is a very common move in these dragon variations because you're thinking about hopping into c4, when if nothing else, uh, you're forcing white to give up the light squared bishop. And of course, moving the knight over here opens up the rook so that sacrifices on c3 and various attacking ideas start to be possible. After knight e5, Tal sees a tremendous idea and he goes for it. It's very hidden and his opponent does not detect it. He plays the move g5 right here 
And Black, of course, trades right here and says, all right, I'm going to get rid of this rook that was so passive on h8 here. I'm just going to trade it off and I'm going to play, you know, rook takes h1, rook takes h1, knight h5. All right, maybe my position's still not so great, but I've closed the h file. My king feels like it's not going to get checkmated right away, and maybe I'll get a chance later in the game. This is still a good position for white, but this is certainly what black is hoping for. The problem is that after rook takes h1, Tal had prepared this great combination. Instead of capturing on h1, he captures on f6, leaving the rook hanging here on h1, but also allowing the rook to capture on d1 with check. Of course, capturing on f6 will simply allow white to pick up the free rook on h1, uh, and white has won a piece in this bargain. So you are forced to continue and capture another rook here with rook takes d1. And again, beautiful, brilliant move from Tal. He's seen it all coming. He plays knight takes d1. I have a strong suspicion that black had not anticipated this move with rook takes d1. This opens up an attack on the black queen right here. That queen is undefended, so there's really no sensible move in the face of all the threats other than queen takes d2. And we might ask here, what is Tal planning? This looks crazy. Um, we're just losing pieces after we recapture and black captures on f6. Then black is clearly winning this game. Of course, we're not recapturing here. We have an amazing Zwischensung, one of the best Zwischensungs of all time. We have pawn takes g7. And in this position, white's minor pieces are perfectly set up so that they defend each other with the bishops and the knights defending every key square and most importantly defending c2 where black would try to give checkmate if there were not a knight defending c2 this bishop holds the mate right here so ultimately what this means is that black has no constructive move here and faces two humongous threats simply bishop takes d2 which would be excellent but the bigger threat is promotion on the g8 square and the promotion if for example queen a5 is not simply the gain of a queen it is in fact checkmate and if you want to be sassy about it then you can promote to a rook instead and you get this final position in fact after f takes g7 black resigned in this position obviously totally justified there's simply nothing available for black to do and Tal notched another amazing victory. If you want to see more of these amazing victories from Tal, you can click on the playlist over here on top of the board for some more of his best games.